Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the reading of our Sunday morning devotionals for December 10th, 2023. We're going to start off with David Jeremiah's book, Walking with God. Tis the Christmas season. Our lesson today is entitled, Joseph, a Just Man. Scripture is from Matthew chapter 1, verse 19 and 20. Then Joseph, being a just man, and not wanting to make her a public example, was minded to put her away secretly. But while he thought about these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him. The word just means righteous, fair, and upright. When the scriptures describe Joseph as a just man, they show us the qualities in his life that caused God to choose him to be the earthly father of the Lord Jesus. Joseph was compassionate. When he learned Mary was pregnant before their marriage ceremony, He was entitled to divorce her in a public spectacle or a private ceremony. Choosing the gracious option, he decided to divorce her quietly. He didn't seek revenge, but thought about what was best for Mary. Joseph was thoughtful. While he was trying to decide how to handle his dilemma, he thought about these things. His pause for thought gave God time to speak to him through an angel. Had Joseph acted rashly, the plan could have gone awry. Parents, when you bring compassion into your parenting, you will raise tender-hearted children who can see with the eyes of Jesus. When you bring thoughtfulness, taking time to think before acting, you will raise children who act fairly and justly, giving honor to God. And here is an unknown quote. The most valuable gift you can give another is a good example. I like that. Now from David Jeremiah's Moments with God. Our lesson is entitled, The Picture of Obedience. Our scripture is from Matthew chapter 1, verse 20 and 21. Behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take to you Mary your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. And she will bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Though Joseph only appears a handful of times in the Bible, he paints a perfect picture of what obedience should look like. Joseph was confronted with a truth that defies any logic that he had ever known. He's been told that he must not only play the role of Mary's protector and husband, but also the role of the Messiah's earthly father. Imagine being given the task of raising the incarnation of God. And yet Joseph rises to the task and fulfills his duties as Mary's husband and the earthly father of Christ. Joseph took on the roles that the Lord gave him because he trusted him. When Joseph was caught between what he knew and what he couldn't understand, he trusted God. When you don't understand the why behind what God is asking you to do, obey and trust him as Joseph did. And from Sarah Young's book, Jesus Calling. There are three scriptures which accompany the reading. 
The first is from Isaiah chapter 41, verse 10. So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. And from Psalm chapter 139, verse 10. Even there your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me fast. And from the book of James, chapter 1, verse 2. Consider it pure joy, my brothers, whenever you face trials of many kinds. Make me the focal point of your search for security. In your private thoughts, you are still trying to order your world so that it is predictable and feels safe. Not only is this an impossible goal, but it is also counterproductive to spiritual growth. When your private world feels unsteady and you grip my hand for support, you are living in conscious dependence on me. Instead of yearning for a problem-free life, rejoice that trouble can highlight your awareness of my presence. In the darkness of adversity, you are able to see more clearly the radiance of my face. Accept the value of problems in this life, considering them pure joy. Remember that you have an eternity of trouble-free living awaiting you in heaven. And from David Jeremiah's book, Daily in His Presence, our lesson is entitled, The Incense of Worship. Scripture is from Exodus chapter 30, verse 30 through 35. And the Lord said to Moses, Take sweet spices, stacte, and onica, and galbanum, and pure incense with these sweet spices. There shall be equal amounts of each. You shall make of these an incense. For thousands of years, the tree Arbor Thurifera growing in the Arabian Peninsula and Lebanon, has been tapped for its resin. The bark was cut, and exuding resin was allowed to dry as nodules or tears. When hardened, the resin, called frankincense, was ground into a fine powder. When subjected to a flame, it gave off a sweet and powerful aroma an incense used in the worship of God in the tabernacle and temple. Frankincense derives from the old French franc incense, meaning highest quality incense. When the Magi journeyed to Bethlehem and saw the baby Jesus, they fell down and worshipped him, presenting frankincense, the most noble incense of worship as one of their gifts. Paul refers to the life of the Christian as a living sacrifice, a reasonable service of worship. That service becomes a wonderful aroma, the incense of worshipful service in our life. What gift of frankincense can we give to Christ this Christmas? the highest quality incense of service to him and to others is the aroma of Christ in us. Frankincense. Interesting. And now Sarah Young's book, Jesus Always. There are four scriptures. The first is from the book of Psalm, chapter 37, verse 7. Be still in the presence of the Lord, and wait patiently for him to act. Don't worry about evil people who prosper, or fret about their wicked schemes. From Jeremiah, chapter 29, verse 13. 
You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. And from the book of Psalm, chapter 96, verse 12 and 13. Let the fields be jubilant and everything in them. Then all the trees of the forest will sing for joy. They will sing before the Lord, for he comes. He comes to judge the earth. He will judge the world in righteousness and the peoples in his truth. And finally from Romans chapter 12, verse 21. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Be still in my presence, and wait patiently for me to act. Spending quality time with me is so good for you, beloved. I rejoice when you push back the many things clamoring for your attention and focus wholeheartedly on me. I know how hard it is for you to sit quietly with me, and I don't expect perfection from you. Instead, I treasure your persistence in seeking my face. My loving approval shines on you as you seek me with all your heart. This intimate connection between us helps you wait trustingly for me to act. Don't worry about evil people who prosper or fret about their wicked schemes. Trust that I'm still in control and that justice will ultimately prevail. I will judge the world in righteousness and the peoples in my truth. Meanwhile, look for ways to advance my kingdom in this world. Keep your eyes on me as you go through today and be willing to follow wherever I lead. Do not be overcome or discouraged by evil, but instead overcome evil with good. And from David Jeremiah's book, Ever Faithful. Our lesson is entitled, Why There is Christmas. And the scripture is from Philippians chapter 2, verse 8. He humbled himself. The trappings of Christmas are wonderful. The colors, the lights, boughs, and wreaths. But it is possible to become trapped in the trappings and miss the truth. And the truth of Christmas is far better than its trappings. The truth of Christmas is Christ. In a sense, of course, Christmas is about us. God loved us, became flesh for us, died to forgive our sins, and rose to give us everlasting life. Christmas is the celebration of what Jesus did for us, but in return, we should make it all about Him, loving Him, serving Him, praising Him, and emulating His attitude of humility. He humbled Himself to become human. In turn, Joseph and Mary put His interests before their own. The shepherds, too, put Him first, they left their flocks and bowed before him. The Magi worshipped him and presented him with their gifts. In the temple, the aged Anna and the venerable Simeon praised God because of him. They gladly let him be the central focus. Let's have ourselves a humble Christmas. Turn your thoughts toward him and others. What a great time to rededicate the remainder of your days on earth to serving Christ with a humility that transcends the holidays. And from Jesus Listens, 
written by Sarah Young. As you probably know, our devotional is in the form of a prayer. Today's prayer is taken from the books of Philippians, Matthew, and Luke. And so, let us pray. O precious Jesus, you are my treasure. You're immeasurably more valuable than anything I can see, hear, or touch. Knowing you is the prize above every other prize. Earthly treasures are often hoarded, worried over, or hidden for safekeeping. But the riches I have in you can never be lost or stolen or damaged. In fact, I've found that as I share you freely with others, I gain even more of you. Since you are infinite, there will always be more of you for me to discover and to love. My world often feels fragmented with countless things, both small and large, vying for my attention. So much stuff keeps getting in the way of my desire to spend time enjoying your presence. I admit that being worried and bothered about many things comes naturally to me. When I make you that one thing, I choose what will not be taken away from me. Help me to rejoice in your continual nearness and to let my awareness of your presence put everything else in perspective. You are the treasure that can brighten all my moments. In your priceless name, Amen. Lila and I would like to thank you for joining us once again for the reading of our Sunday devotionals on another Advent Sunday in the month of December. We are all so grateful for what we have. We're so thankful for so many things, our lives, our family, the food we eat, everything. We hope that you are having a great day and the rest of this month of December is a blessed one for you and your families. Take care, everyone, and may God bless you all.